Today we will talk about the periodic table. So what's the periodic table? We can say that the periodic table is the classification for all elements known till today. Yes, this is the shape of the periodic table. But as a note, this is called the modern periodic table. There were other periodic tables before that one actually. Like the first periodic table which was made by the scientist Mendeleev. Dimitri Mendeleev and it looked like this. Um, so as we can see it's very simple and there are even some elements which weren't discovered yet. Then scientists made contributions and new discoveries, new elements were discovered like uh, the contributions of Mosley and Rutherford who were working on finding the atomic spectra which opened a lot of other new fields in the uh, atomic structure and made it a lot pronounced and also the contribution of the scientist Aufbau who made the building up principle. It illustrates the way that the electrons build up the atom. How are they arranged in the energy levels of the atom? So it depends on that each energy level contains a group of sublevels. These sublevels are S, B, D and F, and that each energy level carries a number of sublevels according to its own arrangement. For example, the first energy level carries only one sublevel, which will be the S. The second will carry two, which will be the S and the P. The third will carry three, which are the, the S, P and D. And the fourth will carry four, S, P, D and F, and so on. So these sublevels are arranged in sequence, in a certain order, as we can see here. Take a deep look at that image before we proceed, because this plays a very important role in the classification of elements in the periodic table. Now let's see how can we figure out the classification of elements inside this periodic table. So I tried to draw the periodic table on the board in order to make this um, easier to illustrate. So this is the shape of the modern periodic table. Now we have horizontal lines and vertical lines. The horizontal lines are called periods and they are seven the same number of the main energy levels in the atom or the same number of the principal quantum number inside an atom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 then we go to the vertical um, groups here so these are called groups let's take the first two the first two here collectively are called the S block. So it contains group 1A and group 2A. It's called the S block because here the maximum energy level inside. Uh, the elements which are found in group 1A and group 2A contains at the outermost energy level the S sublevels. For example, hydrogen. The electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1S1. Lithium. The electronic configuration of lithium is 1S1, 2S, 1S2. Sorry, 2s1. So, 1 here indicates the number of the group, 1a. So, what about 2a? 2a will contain the uh, element whose electronic configuration is 1s2 and 2s2. So, apparently, when we go from left to right by one group, an electron is added to the electronic configuration of the element.
Then we go to that block at the right. This is called the B block. So it's called the B block because the outermost energy sublevel in these elements is the B block. Now the B block can carry at most six electrons. This block can carry at most two electrons, so it contains two groups. Well, the B block can carry at most six electrons, so we have here uh, P1, P2, 3, 4, 5, then 6. Okay, that's why it's called the B block. The S block and the B block together are called the representative elements. And we refer to their groups by the letter A. Now we go to the block in the middle. The block in the middle is called the D block. This is called the D block because the elements found in here have their outermost energy sublevel um, saturated with electrons in the D block. So, beginning from here, we have D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We conclude from that that the maximum amount of electrons to be carried in the D block is 10 electrons. So, this is the D block. And finally, we have the F block. And if we count the number of groups found here, we'll find that they are 14, because the F block contains the elements in which the F energy sublevel is filled uh, gradually, from beginning to end. And so, as the F sublevel is capable of carrying 14 electrons at most, these are 14 groups. Um, this is what the periodic table consisting of. Now, we will talk about some elements in this periodic table. For example, these elements. These are called the inert gases or the noble gases. All of the elements in the periodic table, their outermost energy, main energy level, is not filled completely with electrons, except these ones. Their outermost energy levels are completely saturated with electrons, and this is the main reason for their chemical stability. They are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. So, second we will talk about the d-block elements. The d-block elements are um, called the transition elements and they are classified into three groups. The first group is called the first transition series and it consists of the first row in the d-block beginning from scandium to zinc and the second transition series beginning from yttrium to cadmium and the third transition series beginning from lanthanum to mercury. So, as we have mentioned in the beginning that when we move one step from left to right an electron is added to the electronic configuration of the element. But if we look at lanthanum and the element after lanthanum, which is called hafnium, we'll find that the, the electronic configuration of lanthanum is 57, then hafnium is 72. So, this is the place between lanthanum and hafnium where the first series of the F-block is found. 
It's the same thing between actinium and rutherfordium. Actinium is 89 and rutherfordium is 104. So there are 14 elements between actinium and rutherfordium. It's the second row of the F block. So this is the place where the F block is found. But we draw it at a separate part beneath the periodic table. So the F block elements contain two groups, or uh, two, we can say two periods. The first one is called the lanthanides, and the second one is called the actinides. The lanthanides have some properties which discriminates them from the actinides. In the lanthanides, the um, 4F sublevel is filled successively, while the actinides have the 5S sublevel filled successively as we go from left to right. Also, the lanthanides are characterized by that their outermost energy sublevel is 6s2. So, that's because the 6s2 sublevel must be filled before the 4f sublevel. But in reality, its place is after the 4f sublevel. So, the outermost energy level in the lanthanides is 6s2. And that's why their uh, chemical properties are very uh, near from each other, and that's why they are called rare earths, and they cannot be separated from each other simply. The actinides are characterized by their unstable nuclei and high chemical radioactivity. The S block contains two groups, 1A and 2A. The B block contains six groups, beginning from 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A. And the eighth group is called group 0, the one containing the inert gases or the noble gases. The D block contains 10 groups. And the uh, groups... 8B, 9B, 10B, they are called group 8. The three of them are found under the same group. And the D block consists of three parts. The first um, transition series, where um, the 3D sublevel is filled successively as we go from left to right. The second is called the second transition series. And here we have the 4D sublevel filled, and the third is called the um, third transition series, where the 5D sublevel is filled successively when, when we go from left to right. And finally, the F block, which is found between lanthanum, hafnium, actinium, and rutherfordium, consists of 14 elements each. In a separate row, we have the first group, which is called the lanthanides. In the lanthanides, the 4F sublevel is filled successively. And in the second group, it's called the actinides. And we have the 5F um, sublevel filled successively. So, this is it for today, and see you next time.